Coming to you live from New York City, it's Jim Caruso's Pajama Cast Party. And now, here's your host, Jim Caruso. Thank you, Billy Stritch. Hi, how are you? It's Monday. My favorite day. Do you like Monday? I do. Um, I am so happy that all of you have joined us tonight. We have just the greatest show. You're going to have a blast. Uh, I'm going to have a blast. Uh, do you want to hear who's on? Let me tell you. We have Teron Brooks, Joe Poza as Joan Rivers, J.G. Macapugai, and Marilyn May. Now, for heaven's sake, I will be your host, Jim Caruso. And we also have our trusty producer, Ruby Lochner. Let me see if I can bring her to the screen. Oh, Ruby. Oh, Jim. <laughs> what up? Oh, what up? Me, I'm up. I'm not on the floor anymore. I know. Well, don't tell people that. <laughs> sure. Uh, no, no you were having of... back problems last week. Yes, and I thank the Pajama Cast Party uh, audience for asking if I had a chiropractor and what I was doing to try to get better. Um, I am getting better. I'm thrilled to be here, not on the floor. I actually think my chiropractor might be watching. So I'd like to say hello, Dr. Siegel, if you are. Uh <laughs> Dr. Siegel, I need you. Do you know, Ruby... I follow chiropractors on Instagram. There's one in Australia who is incredible, and there's one in uh, California who is, now when I say incredible, here's what I mean. They're very photogenic, they're yeah. very funny, and they get noises out of these people that I'm not even sure it's legal to get those kinds of noises from somebody's <laughs> spine, neck, ankle, whatever. But I watch them and I feel better. Yeah. Afterwards, because I feel like my shoulders lower a bit and I'm just a little bit more loose. Well, I love not to start off the show talking about something completely unrelated, but I do love the chiropractor. And uh, a week ago, I had a bulging disc that kept me on the floor. And now, thanks to my wonderful chiropractor, I am sitting upright. So. If that's Love not it. progress, I don't know. Maybe we, wait, Jim, maybe we should have a chiropractor night on Pajama Cast Party. Oh, please. There's somebody at your door. There's okay. someone and at your door. And it's the chiropractor. Nothing would make me happier. Okay, chiropractic Dr. Siegel, has we gotta saved get you on. me. <laughs> it saved me so many times. Uh, I'm a big fan, and I'm glad you are too. That's our. <laughs> Welcome to Pajama <laughs> Cast Party, everybody. <laughs> the more you know. Uh, crack with us, won't you? Uh, you know, every week we're so lucky because our brilliant friend, Justin Squiggs Robertson, who is the, the chiropractor, the caricature <laughs> artist to the stars, joins us. Uh, he, he's just an extraordinary artist. He does quick sketches of everybody while they're performing on Pajama Cast Party. Tonight is no different. He's with us. And my favorite thing, Ruby, as you know, is when you put on the camera turn it on over his shoulder so we can see what he's up to, what he's done in the last, well, three minutes. Just, can we see? Can you turn that on? He said he doesn't want to. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, of course I can. Okay. Of course I can. Uh, Are you ready? <laughs> let's see. Yep. Put on the glasses. Here we go. Here we go. <gasps> oh. Okay. I don't know how he does that in the three minutes that we're talking. I mean... Oh, look, we're at Birdland. Oh, we're at Birdland. Well, that's Do you notice course. that he's giving us, he's taking us on a tour of New York the past couple of weeks? It was, it was Times Square. Then it was, stat, was it Statue of Liberty? Where were we? Well, I was, was the Statue of Liberty. Oh, you were the Statue of Liberty. That's right. Um, and last week was Carnegie Hall. And now we're at Birdland. And now we're at Birdland. Oh, and we'll be at Birdland soon. We just don't know when, but we'll be uh, there. Uh, you know, here's what I have to say. Uh, Ruby, you know that every week we talk to the people about our Venmo and PayPal. Uh, we 
to do this show shockingly costs something. I know. I mean, we're just sitting in our living rooms. However, um, not only do we collect for our own selves to keep the show up and running, but even more importantly, uh, this week we were inspired to collect some money uh, to donate to the AIDS Walk. Uh, every year, the AIDS Walk New York happens. It's New York's largest and most visible HIV AIDS fundraising event. And in its 35 years, the AIDS Walk has inspired more than 890,000 people to walk and millions more to donate, uh, raising about $155 million to combat HIV and AIDS. The AIDS Walk, um, the primary beneficiary is GMHC, whose mission is to fight and end the AIDS epidemic and uplift the lives of everybody affected. So this year's virtual event, uh, because of course there's a pandemic, uh, the show will be virtual, the walk will be virtual, uh, but it'll include a televised segment from Central Park's Bethesda Fountain, which is like that way. It's like a block that way from me. Uh, so know that if you give 10 bucks, 20 bucks, 50 bucks, a million bucks. Uh, a million would be good. A million uh, would be great. Let me just put that really out. Really good. A million would be <laughs> really, really good. really good. Not only are you donating to keep Pajama Cast Party on the air, uh, but to uh, help with HIV prevention and care and advocacy. And I think we all know how important that is to all of us uh, all over the globe. Thank you for that. And uh, we'll remind you again uh, during the show, but you can Venmo and PayPal over there, down there. Uh, you can also share this show. This would be a good time mm -hmm. to click share, right, Ruby, since we're just starting out? Yes, you can share if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, you can follow us on Facebook, if you haven't already. I like, I like when they you do that. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel, if you haven't already. And you can follow us on Instagram, if you haven't already. You can't watch the show on Instagram, but you can get a lot of other fun content from us, so. I mean, we're givers. <laughs> we just want you, to, we're just show-offs. We just want you to see everything we do. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think that's all of the business at hand, other than we can talk about swag, you know, cast party. Oh, masks. we can also talk about, speaking of pajama cast party, um, yeah. if people, you know, I feel like even though things are slowly starting to open back up, people are always looking for more things to watch. I know, I know I am, because honestly, I still don't really leave my home much. So uh, besides watching pajama cast party, thank you, Jim. Um, Jim, I know you and I both watched Halston this week, but we have some pajama cast party alum on the show. So if anyone's looking for anything to watch, they should watch that. That's right. We sure do. Uh, yes, we'll talk about that in a minute. That's a good okay. idea. Let's let's talk about that. Um, I just want to get the show going because we have so much. This is a packed show. Uh, and are you ready, Ruby? Are you, do you need to? Do we need to do anything? No, I'm ready. My back is stretched. Uh, I'm gonna go okay. produce now. And no, if right. anyone needs me, I'll just be here with my dog. So that's it. Okay. okay. Have fun. Thank you. Bye, Ruby. Um, okay. Are you ready? Sit back. Have you poured yourself a frosty beverage? Um, Teron Brooks has starred on Broadway in The Lion King and Hairspray and was nominated, get this, for two NAACP awards for his performance as Eddie Kendricks in the Emmy Award winning miniseries, The Temptations. And he's releasing a brand new single. Here's Teron Brooks. Jim, how are you? I'm fantastic. Now I'm much better being here. <laughs> we we just lost you. I'm sorry. What did you say? I said I'm much better now being here with you. You're very kind. I am delighted to see you. Uh, congratulations on well uh, everything, a great career, but mostly your new single. 
Thank you so much. I'm excited. I wish I could clone myself. I'm going everywhere talking about it, but I'm really excited about the song and the timing of the song since it's such an inspirational uh, message for everybody since we need that hope right now for sure. Yeah. That is for damn sure. It's a great song. It's a song everybody knows. It's called Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. It's the Annie song. we know it. Yeah, we it's know it. Annie. Everybody knows it. And a little backstory is I made a record called The Soul of Broadway with a lot of Broadway songs that we reimagined pretty rebelliously, um, took them out of the context of the theater and the, the characters and just made them just anthems and songs that everybody could connect to, starting with myself. And this was the first song that the label, one a label uh, distributed by um, Mercia Sony Records, they chose the song. So it's perfect. Perfect. It's a great song. The arrangement is so cool. Who came up with the vibe of the arrangement? Well, it was collaborative. I, I did most of it in the shower. <laughs> and then I have Mark Vogel and Sylvia McCullough. They're my collaborators on the arrangements and the producing of it all. But it was the last song that we did for the record. We basically had one hour to decide if we were going to put the song on the record. I had to run in the booth, sing the song in one hour for it to replace another song. And then it actually is the first single on our record. So I'm glad that we did it. And I found out recently that the song Tomorrow from Annie was the last song that was added in the musical. I don't know if you knew that. I yeah, had no idea. It wasn't gonna be in it. They needed a set change or some kind of change. So they threw the girl out there and, and, and wrote the song and it- Oh, right, cause she sings it in one. Yep in front of a drape. Oh my God. It was, it was for a change and this song could have been omitted and now we know how great it is, so. It's such a great song. It's a gorgeous arrangement that you have. Now, but also on this album, Soul of Broadway, is Just My Imagination. Yeah, I finally- From The Temptations. Did. Yeah, it took me 23 years to, to record thing. It's completely different from the Eddie Kendricks version, but we kind of revamped it, sped it up a little bit. So yeah, we're excited about that song too. I can't wait to hear that cut. Uh, now, you've done a lot of Broadway stuff. You were on Broadway as Simba in The Lion King and in Hairspray. We have a picture of you in Hairspray. You look like you're like 12 years old, Chris Paul. <laughs> yeah, look at that wig. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. That was the Talk time about of my life. Time of oh, my I life. Bet. Was people, oh, my Harvey, God. Marissa, my friend Matthew, lifelong friends. And I'll tell you one thing, if you're a Hairspray alumni or fan or whatever, there was not a night even if I was tired, even if I was sick, that I wouldn't want to be on that stage. You got the beat. There was something in infectious about the way that they wrote it. Um, Mark Shaman and Scott Whit uh, Whitman and um, Blast. One of the best memories on stage that I've ever had. Yeah. How great. Well, you so you went from that experience and, and Broadway doing eight shows a week to, I would think, the, the pressure of recreating a real person and performing the role of Eddie Kendricks in the NBC movie, The Temptations. What's it like to be somebody who, uh, who we all kind of know of? I mean, that's a lot of pressure. Well, Jim, thank God I was so naive. It was my first film and I guess I thought I wouldn't get it. So I was like, let me just go down and meet the people, say hi, you know? And then I finally, after nine auditions, received the role. I just, I was so overwhelmed, but excited about it. I guess I couldn't think about the magnitude until after, um, but everybody was so gracious and we worked really, really hard. If you say you're gonna do The Temptations, you know, first of all, we have to learn the choreography. We, yeah. have, to, we have to master what they had, had done to even present it. And we worked really, really hard. And I just wanted to present Eddie's character. I wasn't trying to imitate him or mimic him. I just wanted to present his character and we have, some similarities with our characters. So I, that made it easy, but gosh, you know, getting complimented by Smokey Robinson and um, just his family members. Some of his family's members would say, yeah, you kind of move your neck just like my uncle. I'm like, well, I didn't study that. So there was a lot of synergy. I love there. it. I love it. Well, you've been able to work with these icons, uh, Stephanie Mills and Smokey and Michael Jackson. Give me, give me a Michael Jackson story. Just, well, just I was drop. a kid. I was a kid with Michael. I, I did the Super Bowl with Michael Jackson. So I was one of the oh millions of kids that performed that song, Heal the World. Um, uh, yeah. So that was my only remem remembrance of him. I'm sure if I would actually shake his hand or meet him, I would have been gone, right? Yeah, um, just gone. <laughs> just 
Amazing. Well, you're so busy. You have a new podcast that's starting tomorrow. Tomorrow. Uh, tell me. I've been wanting to do this forever. And you know, timing is something incredible about timing because we all need things to do and need things to kind of bring us out of this um, situation, which we're kind of stepping out of anyway. But all of my guests from uh, tomorrow, I'm actually having Leon from The Temptations. So it'll be like a reunion of some sorts. We will sit down with Leon and have Stephanie J. Block and have Shoshana Bean and have Sheila E. and Crystal Lewis. All of my guests seem to have some reflective nuggets to give us. Um, the show is not about their careers. It's not about what they do. It's more about who they are. And I ask them questions about like, what is love? Uh, what what is your biggest disappointment? I mean, what is your great escape? So we're really getting inside of these people that we think we know. And I'm telling you, it was an incredible experience for me. And I, I think it will be for the for the listeners. But you know, something you always have these dreams and you never know. Same thing with the solo Broadway. I thought about this five or six years ago to now have it come out. So you just have to be patient with stuff. I love it. And it sounds very uh, motivational. Um, is a talk show the dream? Ooh, ah, I don't know if it's the dream, but if it's an avenue to get more people to be inspired, yeah. I call myself the singing Oprah. <laughs> so <laughs> I love to, to incorporate my music and my inspiration with my uh, inspirational message some kind of way. So Jim, from your mouth first, let's just say it. Let's say it. Let's put it out there. <laughs> I love it. I want you to sing for us. I love to sing. Do it. This is probably maybe the first time live that I'm singing this arrangement of tomorrow. So, uh oh, oh, this is the song. This is the single. This is the single. Listen, purchase, people, purchase. <laughs> Are you ready? We're ready. The sun will come out tomorrow That's your bottom dollar that tomorrow There'll be sun Just thinking about tomorrow Clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow Till there's none When I'm stuck with the day that's gray and lonely, I just stick up my chin and grin and say, the sun will come out tomorrow. Gotta hang on until tomorrow. Yes, the sun will come out tomorrow. Come what may, I love you tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The sun will come out tomorrow. That's your bottom dollar that tomorrow. There'll be sun Just thinking about tomorrow Clears away the cobwebs and the sorrow Until there's none When I'm stuck with day that's gray and lonely I stick up my chin, I grin, and I say Oh, oh, the sun will come out tomorrow. Gonna hang on until tomorrow. Yes, the sun will come out tomorrow. Come what may, I love you. Yeah. Tomorrow, oh, 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 tomorrow, 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 oh, tomorrow, 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 oh, 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 o
stuck with the same. What's gray and lonely? I stick up my chin. I grin. I say, I say, oh, oh, the sun will come out tomorrow. Gotta hang on until tomorrow. Yes, the sun will come out tomorrow. Come what may. I love you. Come what may. I love you. Come what may. I love you. Oh, tomorrow. The sun will come out tomorrow That's your bottom dollar that tomorrow There'll be sun I'm going to get the recording of that and play it for my little voice teacher and say, I want that. <laughs> I want that sound. What a gorgeous, yeah. Thank easy, you. natural, soulful voice you have. Hi, Julie. That's called Julie Garnier. <laughs> Julie Garnier. Hi, Julie. Thank you, Jim. Uh, my gosh. I really look forward to your podcast. I really look forward to hearing the entire album. When does the entire album come out? Or it'll is it already out? No, it'll be out in September, hopefully. September, yeah. Great. So we will watch. Do we we follow you on Instagram and Facebook and all the places? Follow me in all the places, and I'm one of those people that actually write back and say hi back if you say hi. So It's true, because you wrote back to me. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, you're incredible. Thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for lighting up the lives, our lives, and, and putting some positivity out there, because you know it really does matter when people are connected together and through music and through art. I think it makes a difference. So thank you. I do, too. I couldn't agree more. And thank you for joining us. Thanks, Jim. That's Teron Brooks, everybody. Thank you. What a delightful recording that is. We all have to get it. Now, just go on your Spotify or go on your iTunes or just, just buy that. Just give him a couple dollars, for heaven's sake. Uh, you can also Venmo and PayPal us right here, right there. Mm -hmm. la, 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 la. Uh, we would love that if you would do that. A couple bucks would be nice of you. <clears throat> so we can continue to do this. Because, you know, we're not going anywhere. Okay. Hold on to your hair. She was a comedy icon, a playwright, a producer, a designer, and a very shrewd businesswoman. And she reinvented the whole concept of the red carpet with the simple question, who are you wearing? I'm so honored to bring to the pajama cast party stage with a lot of help from Joe Poza, Joan Rivers. Hello, hello, hello. Perfect, perfect, and hello and welcome. Jim, I'm so excited that you asked me to be part of Pajama Cast Party. But of course, I'm not in my fucking pajamas. Look at this. Glamour, glamour, and I'm in my penthouse in New York. See the background? This is it. New York, my penthouse. I had a lot of money. Uh, it, Marie Antoinette would have lived like me if she had as much money as I had. Yes, yes, yes. And I wanted to look good for you tonight. I hope I did. Jim called me. I came down for the heavens one night only, and uh, and and I wore this. What do you think? What do you think? Yeah. I found this outfit in Lindsey Graham's closet, which is perfect. 
Oh, he has been in the closet so long. I want to give him to Goodwill. Can we talk about that? You know, but, uh, but, uh, you know, I've gained a little weight in quarantine. It's been very difficult. You know, I wouldn't say I'm eating a lot, you know, but in three days, I burnt out five light bulbs in the refrigerator. Yes, yes, yes. You know, it's the bread. It's the damn bread that's hard. You know, bread is like the sun. It rises in the yeast and it sets in the waste. True. Yes. Now I'm going to have to go to Overeaters Anonymous all over again. I'm going to have to do it. And all these fat bitches sitting around complaining, you know, nobody loves me. Nobody loves me. I'm thinking that's not true. Your butcher loves you. Your baker loves you. People love you. And they say to me, well, Joan, when I buy an airplane ticket, they make me buy two seats. I said, look, you get two meals. The bitch perked right up, you know, yeah, but I can't wait to fly again. First of all, let's start with this. I'm so glad masks are off. Masks are off finally, thank God, because do you know how much money I paid for this fucking face? You know, if you, would you, would you buy a Ferrari and keep it in the garage? No, no, my face is like a JLo movie. It might not be very good, but a lot of people worked really hard on it and the budget was huge. Yes, but I can't wait to travel again. You know, uh, I love it, but they should leave gay men and Jews alone at the airport. Leave us alone. No gay man is going to put a gun in his luggage. There's no room. They go on vacation. They bring everything just in case. You know, I'm going to the opera. I got the outfit. You know, I'm going snorkeling. I got the outfit. And if a gay man wants to bring down a plane, he does not need a gun. He just knocks on the pilot's door and he says, I'm dating your son. And a Jew, you want me, yet a Bernstein, to put a bomb in a Gucci bag? Are you fucking crazy? Do you know how many people had a fuck to get that Gucci bag? And she's not going to wear the bomb on her. You know, does it make me look fat? Can you see the bomb? Can you see the bomb? <laughs> but, uh, oh, God. But in quarantine, you know, I watched a lot of Netflix, you know, because I'm alone, a Jew at loan. I saw, what did I see? The Crown. With the crown was fabulous. Yes, yes, yes. You know, because uh, the, the, the closest thing I ever got to royalty was having my teeth crowned. Yes. But I met the Queen of England. Can we talk about this? I met the Queen of England later in my career, you know, because as a child, I only saw her on a stamp. So when I finally met her, I licked the back of her head. FYI, she's balding. Yes. And I knew Princess Diana. Can we talk? And she was never happy. I don't give a shit. Be grateful for what you have. She was never fucking happy. She would say to me, Joan, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. She had everything, Princess Diana. Think about it. She was thin. She was gorgeous. She had two normal children. She had a husband that did not want to sleep with her. She had everything. And she had a crown. Do you know how, do you know how many class reunions she can go to, to the rest of her life? You know, how you doing, Diana? Well, check my hat. That's how I'm doing. Yeah. And Bridgerton, did you see Bridgerton? Fat was all that sex. Oh God, it got me so horny. You know, all that damn sex, you know, because at this age, you know, old sex, the only good thing about old sex is you don't have to change the sheets. The nurse does it. Yes. And I don't want to hear grandma going, I'm coming, I'm coming, unless it's to answer the door. Think about it. And Viagra, those men, 36 hour erections. Think about it. And all those dried out wives in and out and in and out. They're going to set them on fire. Yes. That's how the Malibu fire started, Suzanne Summers. Mm, yeah. But, but I have a dog, you know, and, but the gays go on scruff and grinder, you know, all that stuff, you know, and have one night stands. You know, at this age, you can't have a one night stand, you know, because to get the old guy out of the car, in the house, up the stairs, on you, off of you, re-diapered, back in the car and home, four days. <laughs> But I have a dog. Let's talk. I have a rescue. So wonderful. Uh, a new rescue. Her name is Lulu. And it's a very unusual dog. You know, it's part pit bull and part collie. You know, so it'll rip your fucking face off and then go run for help. <laughs> and at this age, who wants to have sex? My vagina is like Newark, New Jersey. Men know it's there, but nobody wants to visit. 
true. My but and they drop. I don't know. Ruby, Ruby's young. Ruby Lock, no, you're cute, you're pretty, you're young. Enjoy it. At this age, my vagina drops. You know, think if I look down, think about it. My, I think to myself, why am I wearing a bunny slipper? And why is it gray? And it's dry. My vagina is so fucking dry. I took a bath before this show tonight and all the water went. And in that moment, I thought to myself, if only Whitney Houston had a dry vagina, she would still be alive today. Yes. <laughs> Where do you go from there? I'm going to bring Jim back in just a minute. But I want to I want to just uh, tell him he's been doing such a great job with cast party. You know, what a great idea. Pajama cast party. You know, because when I got rid of, when I was fired from Fox and all that crap, I couldn't get a job. And I pitched three show ideas to NBC. I want to share with you. Uh, it was one starring Winona Ryder. It was uh, it didn't work. It was called uh, The Price is Really Right. Didn't work. And then Woody Allen, I thought, why not get Woody Allen, the director, his own show? You know, in front of the camera, it was called uh, Are You Sexier Than a Fifth Grader? Didn't work. And then a Snooki from Jersey Shore. Why not get her her own show? It was called uh, The Deadliest Snatch. None of them worked. But then I got fashion police and you can applaud out there. Everything changed. My life changed. So that's why I want to say, Jim Caruso, mwah, you have a great idea in the show. And uh, soon we'll be at Birdland once again and I'm going to make an appearance. So uh, my darling Jim, I'm going to bring you out. But I just thank you so much because he called me. He said, Joan, we love you. Everyone loves you. Joan, Joan, come back for one night. And I, it meant so much because my parents hated me. And, you know, it's nice to feel the love. My parents hated me. My bath toys were a radio and a toaster. Hated me. For Hanukkah, they bought me a battery that said toy not included. Yes. I think it was horrible. They said to me, Joan, why can't you be more like your cousin Sheila? Why can't you be more like your cousin Sheila? Sheila had died at birth. Yes. And, and one more thing, when my, I was, when my mother delivered me, the nurse said, you know, it's a girl. Yes. And the doctor wanted a second opinion. Yes. They looked at the afterbirth and looked at me and gave my mother the afterbirth. I was ugly, ugly. But tonight I feel the love because Jim Caruso, you called me, I came and uh, uh, I'm so grateful. So, uh, and we need to laugh more than ever. You know, Winston Churchill once said, if you can make one person laugh, it's like take the, taking them on a little vacation. Yes, so if I can do that for any one of you, we need it. Mm, muzzle top. So, uh, my darling Jim, where are you? Let's talk. Let's let's talk a little bit. Uh, hello, Joan, Joan, Joan. Hello, oh, my darling. Mwah. It's so Mwah. good to see you. We miss you so much. So much. How's everything where you are? Uh, everything's, you know, heaven's not all it's cracked to be, Jim. You know, it's like Olympia Dukakis. She just came upstairs, you know, and joined me. And she said, Joan, we're in a better place. We're in a better place. I said, Olympia, we're not in a better place. I had a house in the fucking Hamptons. I'm not in a better place. <laughs> and, and I have a foul mouth. Can we talk? You know, and, you do. And, no, it's true. And I'm cursing and I'm fuck, fuck, fuck. And, you know, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. And he comes running up from behind. What can I do for you, Miss Rivers? <laughs> He's a big so it's fan. not all it's cracked up to be, my darling. He's a big fan, Joan. Now, jo Joan, are you able to to uh, get, to connect with the television to watch the, the award shows and stuff? I love, I saw the Oscars. It was a very intimate, uh, you know, uh, night, you know, but I kind of liked it. I miss all the... The high glamour. No, I miss, well, I don't miss Goldie Hawn. You know, she's like, I would see her every year, Goldie Hawn. You know, she's like 110 years old. She said to me, you know, Joan, can you believe I have a grown up daughter? Yes. <laughs> and lower your ham, lower your ham. Your nipples are showing. Oh, ouch. Yes. No way. And, oh, Joan, I, I know, I know you're a big Anglophile. You touched on this a minute ago. Did you did you watch the Oprah interview with with uh, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry? I watched it. You know, ah, keep your personal life to yourself. I don't know what's going on with the royals. You know, uh, I, I appreciate you. You know, they say speak your truth, speak your truth. <laughs> I say screw it. Go for the royalty. Go for the money. Fuck it. What are they doing in L.A.? They could be in a crown, in a castle. Look where I live. Look at this. Who wouldn't want this shit? Yes. So uh, it was very insightful, but I say go for the money. Joan, you have always lived like royalty. Now, Joan, I love talking to you. 
Uh, could we talk to Joe for a second? Uh, we can talk to Joe for a second, but I just want to say, uh, Jim, it was great. All those times I ran into you at Joe Allen's, all those times we would run into each other and I would say, Jim Caruso. I remember one time I was on a date, you know, and he was so old, he had to pee four times and he never left the table. <laughs> But you are always so great. I remember giving you my jewelry. I said, give this to your mother. She's so wonderful. You did. I you did. did. I, I did. came to your table uh, right over in the corner. And I, I said hi because uh, we had known each other a bit. And you took a necklace right off your neck and gave it to me for my mom. Well, it was one of your QVC necklaces. One of my and, QVCs, maybe this, the Starlet style, maybe one of these. But I like so to beautiful. That. And I and I always remember that night. So you want to talk to uh, Joe Poza? Is that what we want to do? I want to talk to Joe Poza for just a second. We're going to talk about you though, so don't get don't okay. worry. So here we go. We'll do this. Hello. Uh, Hello. Hey, Joe. Hi. Right, talk to me. Hello. <laughs> Joe, how are you? I'm doing great. Uh, I'm gonna. I still use the voice because I'm all on that. You know, it's like. A, but uh, I'm great. I'm just uh, so excited and happy to be giving comedy, uh, Jones comedy, back uh, to the world. I've been uh, touring all over the country, uh, doing my tribute act. Now you know I'm shut down like everyone, but I've been touring all over the world. Uh, all over. Now the is United this States. is this the show called The Bitches Back? Well, about five years ago, I launched. The Bitches Back, and that was very successful. There it is. Uh, so wonderful. And I actually uh, worked with Tony Tripoli, who was- Who Jones. I love. He, wonderful. He was Joan's head writer and opening act for five years uh, and head writer for Fashion Police. And he would open for Joan Rivers. And uh, and he said, Joe, let me open for you because I think you're fabulous. So we would tour all over. He'd open, tell stories about Joan. And then I would come out and we would uh, do all the, you know, the comedy and stuff. So, uh, yeah, the bitch is back. And uh, now I'm launching a new show. Joe poses Joan Rivers Unplugged. So I'll be doing that show this summer at select theaters. And something Great. I'm very excited about is um, I'm doing a new show that's uh, launching uh, next week called uh, Kibitz Without Your Tits. And I'm going to be interviewing, as Joan was a talk show host, uh, two uh, drag celebrities, drag icons in the industry out of drag. Out oh, of that's drag. great. I like that. So it's an That's interesting cool. uh, combination. People, if they want to see, you can get tickets at joeposa.live. Joeposa.live. And it's pay what you can. So that's what I that love is. that. Well, I just love that that you got to know Joan a little bit too. I mean, that must have been so bizarre to to look at you guys. That's look, oh, who which one's which? You know, I don't I don't know which twin has the Tony. I know. Oh, fuck you. I mean, it's like <laughs> now, Joan has the Tony, yes. No, it was wonderful. To tell you where that photo was taken, it was in Provincetown, Massachusetts, uh, July 5th, 2014. She never played uh, Provincetown. She always wanted to. And she played Town Hall, anyone that knows Provincetown. And she did two shows that night. And that was photo was taken at the after party. And then she went back in her limo and right back to New York. Uh, and I got to see her and she said, I love you. Keep." I said to her, you know, I always do you respectfully. She said to me, you can do me disrespectfully. <laughs> and we and she kissed me, I'll never forget Jim, three times that night because we were at the party and she kept running. Mwah! So I felt like she gave me a bit of a blessing. It was a bit of a blessing because then two months later on September 4th, 2014, as we know, that's when she passed. So I, that photo was two months before she passed. And I just felt, uh, and uh, I had known her. She knew me, loved my work. Uh, she used to get me tickets for her shows. And she, she, you know, so we knew each other. And that was the final night that I, I did see her. And I'm, I'm honored to bring her to the stage. I, 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 you know, it, it's just an honor to, to walk in her shoes uh, and, and, and give her comedy, which the world needs right now, you know, so. That's right. Well, she was an unbelievably generous uh, human being. Uh, you're absolutely great. And I can't wait to see you live and in person somewhere very soon. Very Thank you soon. so much. Thank I, you so much for joining us here. I'm so thrilled. And one, and Jim, we, you and I have talked uh, a lot on, online. And one day I'm going to enter Birdland when we can go live. And I'd love to, you know, grace your stage and be uh, do a little set as Joan. And, and perfect. Person. Perfect. Perfect. That would be great. But Jim Caruso, all that you're doing it. is so great. And uh, tonight's show, AIDS Walk, such a great organization. Uh, and so everyone, give what you can. And Jim Caruso, mwah, thank you so much. Uh, I guess thank I have to you, go Joe. Back to, to heaven. And you know. Joan.
it's not hell, it's heaven. That's where I'm going. <laughs> what? Goodbye. Huh. Oh, <sighs> Joan Rivers was the greatest. You guys, I was part of a vocal trio called Wise Guys, and we opened for Joan uh, back in the day uh, a few times, and then she brought us onto her daytime talk show. When it was Phyllis Diller's birthday, we sang two songs on network TV. It was a big deal for us. So every time I'd see her after that, I would always kind of explain who I was because I wasn't ever sure. You know, you're never sure people remember you. Uh, but I would always say, it's me, Jim Caruso. We opened for, she, ah, I remember, I remember. And uh, she was incredibly generous. And uh, the, the staff at Joe Allen has great stories because she was a regular there. And every once in a while, she'd, she'd go up to the waiter. That's right, Bill, you did go to Vegas with Joan. I remember you telling me about that. But she'd go up to her waiter as she was on her way out, put something in their hand. She'd say, don't look, don't look, don't look. And she'd walk out the door and uh, that opened their hand. And it was a, like a wad of hundred dollar bills or it was just, you know, I mean, she just went out of her way to take care of the people that, that took care of her and that were kind to her. And, you know, that's what people need to know. I love that story. So there. So yes, Joe, uh, Venmo, PayPal, AIDS Walk New York. It's an incredible organization. And of course, we keep a little bit for ourselves so that we can do this show for you. My next guest is, I think, one of the busiest performers on the Broadway scene. As soon as I thought, you know, when I was doing my, my uh, due diligence uh, on, on her career, as soon as I thought I had all the material dis to discuss, I'd find another really interesting project to talk about that she's involved in. So let's bring her out here. JG Makapugai. You better pronounce my name correctly. Did I? I'm so glad. I asked like 37 people. <laughs> Did you really? I swear to God, because I mean, that's like the worst hosty thing in the world to mispronounce somebody's name. That it's is happened so to me. Oh, it's so gross when people do that. It's like, could you just have asked someone? Well, um, it's funny because if you talk to my mother and she may very well be watching right now, when she pronounces her last name, she would say Grace Macapuge. But if you were to speak to other Filipinos, she would change the accent to be like Grace Macapuge. So it really <laughs> just depends on who you're talking to. I believe it's called code switching. That's the term now. But uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love that. So Macapuge. Yeah, if you is, want to be more Filipino with the ah well, sound. Well, and I do. Why wouldn't I? Guy. Why? Please. Thank you. Yes. I'm an a Italian from Dallas. It, it's very dull. Um, okay. Uh, uh, JG, I saw you in your Broadway debut, School of Rock on Broadway, which, which made me so insane. It was so great. It was so thrilling. Was it crazy working with all those child geniuses? Well, you know what's funny is last last weekend, I actually saw a whole bunch of the School of Rock kids who are now like going to be freshmen or sophomore in high school. And I knew them when they were like itty bitties. So what I love is, you know, we did this show so many years ago, but then we're still so close. You create that family and uh, we're still all connected to each other. So I loved it. I oh, loved great. working with those kids. The best thing about working with children is... You know, I, I've been in the business for a while, but kids, they just, they really do make it about play and ha making it fun and making it different. And when I saw that every single day um, on Broadway, oh. it just reminded me to do the same thing. Don't take it so seriously. Well, plus you were working with some kind of talented people like um, Alex Brightman and Sierra. Hello, Sierra um, Bogus. Yeah, oh my gosh. No talents, no talent. <laughs> no talent hacks. Hacks, I Hacks. say. No, but I love about Alex and Sierra is both of them, they would have different shows every night. And I could even see Alex like getting a sense of the audience to figure out like, oh, they're not 
necessarily as with us the way we have other audiences. So he would change the tempo of the jokes. He would change the tempo of the mood so that it would just balance. And like, I think that takes true professionalism and like, you know, genius to be able to try and mastermind yeah. like how to be able to control an audience. Absolutely. And so young to have mm -hmm. that control over yeah. audience. I was so impressed by him. He lives across the street from me, as a matter of fact. Um, <laughs> I, I know it must have been crazy to have Jack Black come see the show that you were recreating on Broadway. <laughs> you Look at that. <laughs> what is cuter than that? I love the the photo bomb by uh, John Helmhill in the background. You know, oh. I, I do love that. Um, yeah. yeah, Jack Black came to the show maybe a few months after we opened, and Alex actually was doing these testimonials, like probably right after we opened, saying, "Hey, Jack, you're still not at School of Rock. Oh, that's we're, right. We're waiting for you. We're waiting for you." And then he came, and just gosh, we freaked out. Everybody was trying to get the selfie, and when I tried to get my selfie with him. My phone wouldn't work. My armpits no. were sweaty. And of course, and you could tell I was just being patient because there was like 50 other people that wanted to get a selfie. But I was like, I'm going to get the selfie. I'm like, wait, Jack Black, I will get my phone to work. And I did. We're going to make this selfie. happen. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me tell you, my friend Matt Fox almost ended our friendship when he found out that I had never gotten to see Here Lies Love. Um, here Lies Love is a rock musical written by David Byrne and Fatboy Slim about the life of the former first lady of the Philippines, Imelda Marcos. Hmm. Tell, tell me about, look at that, look at you, first of all. <laughs> uh, tell me about that project. Oh gosh, it was such a, a dream come true because it, it merged every part of why I, I'm an artist. Um, you know, that it, the world needs it. I'm good at it. It's important. I get paid to do it. And it's about my culture. It's about one very specific part of the Filipino culture. But can you imagine, like most of the shows that I had been doing in my career was like everything but Filipino. You know, of I course, was in Miss Agan <laughs> playing a Vietnamese character, or I was in King and I playing a Thai character. Um, but to be able to play a Filipino with a majority of an Asian American cast was just a dream come true. And it's really kind of funny that your your guest tonight was Joe Posa because Joan Rivers came to see our show twice. She loved the show so much. And we were kind of worried because she was already older when she came to see the show. Because when you go to Here Lies Love, it's basically a, a dance club. You're on your feet for 90 minutes. And Joan wow. was game. She was with us the whole time. She met the whole cast. And then she came back again and brought friends. You know, I think she would appreciate a musical about a woman obsessed with shoes. <laughs> yeah. Somehow that doesn't surprise me. Um, <laughs> In June, June 11th, you're part of a show called Broadway Stripped. I, okay, the title, first of all, wins. <laughs> Tell me, are you going to Vegas for this? Vegas, baby, Vegas, or with uh, the way the Filipinos and I say it with the accent, Vegas, with a B. We're going to Vegas on June 11th. Yeah, we're psyched. We start rehearsals this week and we're going over different solos with our cast and yeah Broadway Barcada has been such a special organization to me because over the years you know you're not always gigging you're not always performing but when we created Broadway Barcada in 2009 we were able to create concerts for different Filipino organizations, but it was a way for our Filipino theater community to come together and sing. We did shows for ourselves. We The money that we would create from these shows, we would give to uh, different worthy organizations, but it was a way to keep going and also just celebrate it because it can feel kind of isolating in, in our industry to not yeah. feel like you know, either you're welcome or you're being included. So we we did it for ourselves. This this community was has, has saved me because I haven't I don't always get a chance to see our family. I haven't seen my mom and my dad and brother in a year and a half because of COVID. But my barcada here in New York means crew. We still connect and we get together and we're creating art. So I, I'm I'm so thankful to them. Well, that's going to be at the space in Las Vegas, which mm -hmm. is an incredible space. Uh, you can get tickets at www.thespacelv.com. It's going to be fun. Now, speaking of that, um, May, 
which we are in right now, is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, um, celebrating the history and cultural impact on, um, th on the richness of that community. And I know you've been very involved. Yeah, you know, I, I, when I first moved to New York um, in 2004, I remembered, because I was super green, you know, I, I transitioned into performing later in life. Like I started out as an ad executive, as a professional career woman, and I auditioned for Disney World on my day off and I started performing as a performer at Disney World. But anyway, when I got to New York, I would just start watching these shows and seeing Anne Harada, Christine Toy Johnson, you know, um, Jason Ma. And I was thinking, oh, these are, you know, like a, a wilderness show. Like these are the Asian Americans in their natural habitat. These are the <laughs> Asians on Broadway. You must observe what they do so that you too can become a Broadway Asian. One day, one day, I hope and pray that I will become, but I would like, you know, do shows with them uh, in the ensemble. And I was like, I'm watching and seeing everything they're doing and observing it because I didn't see that growing up. You know, the first person I ever saw um, that gave me the courage to perform was Leia Salonga and right. in, in Miss Saigon. And, you know, she seemed so far away. But when I got to New York, I was able to see people that I felt like was within reach. And it encouraged me. And thank goodness, because it's just what I've always loved to do. But many times people don't get a chance to do what they love to do because uh, they don't see themselves in it. And that's what I love about AAPI Heritage Month. Like, here's a month where if you as an Asian American are feeling maybe a little, mm, I don't know, shy about performing or not wanting to, this is our month to really showcase it and talk about it and celebrate it. And it should be all year long, but hey, this is the month to do it. Why not? And that's why I'm so thankful that I'm, I'm here today. Usually I get nervous about performing for, for these things, but hey, By York Lee told me once, if you have an wow. opportunity, love her. And she told me once, if you've got an opportunity to perform on the world stage. And even if you don't want to, you have to do it because our visibility isn't as it, as it should be. So you say yes, even if you don't want to do it, even if you're nervous, you say yes. And I'm like, yes, Biork Lee, yes. I think Biork is, uh, is absolutely right. Ladies and gentlemen at home, uh, Biork Lee was uh, Connie in, uh, in the original cast of A Chorus Line. Uh, she's a, a genius choreographer and dancer and director and is is just an icon in the business and what a smart what a what a what wise words and i'm so glad you heard her say that and she said it to you i'm yeah. thrilled you're here <laughs> i want i want you to sing oh thank you oh look at renee ruiz jg you're a joy hi renee baby <laughs> Renee. Oh, hi, Jackie. Green. Oh my goodness. Okay, I guess I'm gonna I'm gonna sing. Here we let's let's do this. I okay? think you should mm. do it. Mm. Here we go. Close my eyes and I can see a world that's waiting up for me in a world I call my own. Through the dark, through the door, through when no one's been before, but it feels like home. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say, they can say, I've lost my mind. I don't care, I don't care if they call me crazy. We can live in a world that we design. Cause every night I lie in bed, the brightest colors fill my head. A million dreams are keeping me awake. I think of what the world could be, a vision of the one I see. A million dreams is all it's gonna take. Oh, a 
million dreams for the world we're gonna make. There's a house we can build. Every room inside is filled with things from far away. Special things I compile each one there to make you smile on a rainy day. They can say, they can say it all sounds crazy. They can say, they can say we've lost our minds. See, I don't care, I don't care if they call us crazy. Run away to a world that we design. Cause every night I lie in bed, the brightest colors fill my head. A million dreams are keeping me away. I think of what the world could be, a vision of the one I see. A million dreams is all it's gonna take. Oh, a million dreams for the world we're gonna make. However big, however small, let me be part of it all. Share your dreams with me. We may be right, we may be wrong, but I want to bring you along to the world I see, to the world we close our eyes to see, we close our eyes to see. Every night I lie in bed, the brightest colors fill my head, a million dreams of keeping me awake. I think of what the world could be, a vision of the one I see, a million dreams is all it's gonna take. Oh, a million dreams for the world we're gonna make. For the world we're gonna make. JG, Renee was right. You had the most gorgeous voice. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> now, I just saw uh, our friend Stephen Ott said that you're a perfect Disney princess. Strangely, you're involved in a show. Um, are you? Which show are you talking about? <laughs> Disenchanted. Oh, yes. What I loved about Disenchanted is that it turns the Disney princess theme on its head and makes us the sassy Disney princesses. <laughs> and I've played in that show, I played Mulan. And the reason why Mulan never necessarily got the man was because she was a lesbian. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. All these that ideas. That answers all the questions. Up. Yes. We get to grow up and be the kind of princesses we want to be. I love that so much because i was always that little girl that dreamed of having a prince who would steal me away and let me grow up to be a princess a queen and that started a lifelong journey of bad <laughs> relationships <laughs> so many so many jen <laughs> well that the show disenchanted with other incredible pajama cast party alums like diana de garmo alicia umfris it streamed in October in uh, December, right? Mm -hmm. On Broadway on demand. It was so much fun. Can it's can we still see it? Um, it was that one time only, and I know the writers mm -hmm. Fieli and Dennis have been able to put it in different incarnations in the West End, and they do it all the time regionally. Um, so it was one of those like one night only, but uh, you know, it was fun. Well, it, it was great. Who knows? Maybe it'll come back. Yeah, yeah. Go see it if you mm -hmm. can. Yeah, you're the best. I can't. Thank you enough for joining us. 
Oh, I'm so thankful to be here. And thank you for the pajamas, by the way. You know, I was going to sing A Million Dreams and why not sing with stars on, on my bed? It's so personal. I've had this thing it. since like, I don't know, college, but I still have it. I don't know. Yeah, I, I love, love it. it. Thank you for so much joy that you brought to me and for your audience. I've always wanted to be a part of your show and I'm so thankful that I made it tonight. Well, we'll do it in person at Birdland at some point very soon. Okay. 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 Yes, please. Thanks, JG. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Take care. Delightful. Delightful. Uh, don't forget Venmo, PayPal, AIDS Walk New York, Pajama Cast Party. Uh, go to www.pajamacastparty.com to check out the website. You can find all of our merch, our masks, our mugs. Yeah, I did that before that, yeah. Uh, T-shirts, hats, sweatshirts, pajamas, shower curtains, um, tote bags, magnets, you name it, it's there. We want you to have it all. Thank you, Ruby. Um, okay. I want you to take a look at this clip. It's um, it's our friend Marilyn May singing with the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. I mean, just look at it. Play it, Ruby. Heave the honey, the honey belly drips. You are perfection, perfection. She's one of the all-time great singers of forever. I've known her since the 80s. I've known her forever. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, she's the beloved queen of swing and cabaret. Please welcome marvelous Marilyn May. Thank you. What a Wasn't that nice? Thank you very much. You're Wasn't very that nice of me? You're a great <laughs> MC. You're, you're, you're the best. You're the best. Uh, Cast party. You mentioned cast party a minute ago at yes. Birdland. Oh, how much fun is that? Will we get so back to that fun. soon? Yeah. Oh, we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that and this. I want we're to. We're gonna just. We're just gonna do whatever. We're just gonna entertain everybody every night, whether they want it or not. That be fun. Hi, Marilyn. I'm glad to see you. Hi, sweetheart. You look so good. You're here in New York for a minute. Just for a minute. I leave tomorrow. We're going to. Uh, to Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, a wonderful club that we play twice a year called Crooners. And yes. uh, we'll be there for, for the rest of the week. There. I mean, so, you've yeah. never stopped working, even during the pandemic. <laughs> you have been working your tail off. <laughs> well, we didn't work very much in 2020. We did no. maybe three virtuals, but, but we did Province Town. You talked about P-Town a minute ago. We did P-Town for five nights. And uh, outdoors, the ocean right. was on one side and a swimming pool was on the other. <laughs> but they set up a beautiful stage and wonderful lighting. Uh, Shelley, who is the light person for uh, uh, Mark Cortali, uh, we usually do, it was our 10th year there, that 10th consecutive year. Uh, Billy, Billy Stritch is always with me there. He's and, good. Uh, yes, he's very good. <laughs> he's brilliant. And um, Tom Hubbard was with me this time. And Daniel Glass was my drummer. And uh, we all went to P-Town. And it was, it was really a joy. The audiences, you know, they, they laughed. And this year they cried. And I think they cried for happiness. It wasn't that the act was that bad, I don't think. <laughs> I think they, they cried for, for happiness that we could all be together. 
I just love that there was a pool there. Did you consider doing like an Esther Williams kind of a thing? No, no. <laughs> it's no, just a I, thought. Maybe next I, year. I, I know. I uh, I just got a lot of wind from the ocean. <laughs> <laughs> and Billy's music went, went forever. The music, you know, it was uh, it was interesting and 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 fine. We we were thrilled to be there, and I and I had so much time off. So many cancellations in 2020 that I stayed another week, and I just walked Commercial Street, and everybody was careful. Everybody was very, very careful with their uh, masks, and and uh, in bars and in restaurants, and and it was a very healthy place to be. Well, you love. I know you love it there because you can shop, and all those little, <laughs> all those little gift shops, and I know you go in and you pick up every. Every th every possible I, I, gift I, 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 and well, and I, I know all the proprietors now after ten years. I know. Them. I bet they're like, "Oh, Marilyn's here." <laughs> we just stand and visit. <laughs> okay, so here we are. You know, you're being interviewed by me. You've been doing radio and TV and interview shows like this since you were what nine years old. Uh, yeah, you're right. It was nine. <laughs> I think nine was the beginning of my career. <laughs> I mean, you, you you had a radio show called Marilyn Entertains. I yes. love that. When I was in my teens, and I sang requests, they people would write in requests, and uh, we would do requests. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, in a, in those days, you people could stand outside a glass and watch you. It was kind of, kind of COVID time, I guess. No. I know, very safe. There there were studios, uh, you know, constructed like that. And uh, I had a great accompanist, and and during high school days, I would leave my Spanish class. That's why <laughs> I don't know very much in Spanish other than "Usted es siempre mi corazón." I know that, and, oh, that, and that gets you. I like that. <laughs> and so I would walk down the block and get on the streetcar. There was a streetcar in Des Moines, Iowa, and it would take me to where the radio is. Not very glamorous, right? But uh, I was thrilled to be doing it. I think it paid maybe, I don't know, $25, which was a lot of money in those days. I mean, that was probably a big help to your family too, right? It was to my mother. I was alone with my mother and the two of us, uh, it was uh, you and me against, or maybe for the world or against the world, whichever. Right, right. Well, when you would get requests, what kind of requests were they asking this young teenager to do? Like well, love for sale? Lush life. <laughs> right. I know I know all those. <laughs> I know you do. Uh no, it was a happy song, basically, all great American song book songs. Right. You know, it was the beginning of it all for me. I mean, I just love that you were a kid and your mom played great piano too, right? Mitch played stride. She was good and she my mother play. too. Did your mother I know that. I know your mother was a pianist, isn't that right? she was she was pretty good. Oh, yeah. God. Wasn't that great? She was really good. Um, I know you you settled in Kansas City and had Christy, your wonderful, gorgeous, oh, funny, goodness. smart daughter. Yeah, that's um, right. And, and then you stayed in Kansas City even after um, you got your record deal and stuff. You were discovered by Steve Allen. But you stayed in Kansas City, right? We, um, I did. Um, we we were working in one club there for yes. eleven years. Actually, uh, we did five nights a week until the summertime, and then right. Christy was out of school, so we could get in. We could go to Las Vegas. We worked Vegas with with uh, uh, Shecky Green, who um, I still know and love and and talk to every now and then, and. And uh, Shecky was a great education for me, just his timing alone and the way he connected with an audience. And uh, Shecky and and um, uh, other you know other comedians and and uh, that was a great education. Then we would go back to Kansas City and and uh, work for another season and then go back out to Vegas and right. <laughs> Steve. And then finally, Steve Allen saw me and then came RCA Records and from RCA came. Johnny Carson and and you know I just I'm so glad to be in New York. I've been in New York, you know, for 15 years, Jim. Now I know. 
Well, wait, look, look at this. You just went through, we have a great picture of you and Steve Allen that I absolutely love. That oh. <laughs> is so sweet. Look at you. He is so darling. Look at all no, that. Look hair. at you. You're you're kind <laughs> that of that was my hair. That was not a wig. <laughs> they, you're kind they, of a they, tomato there too, by the way. Oh, oh that's, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Great. Where'd you find um, that? I'm amazed you found that. <laughs> um, where did I find that? On the interwebs. You know how they are. No, it's uh, not. So, so then you do this great RCA record, and is this Meet Marilyn May? Meet Marvelous Marilyn May. That's the first album. Uh -huh. Yeah, look yeah, at that. Album. And my body was little like that. <laughs> but give give me those arms right now, Marilyn, because oh, uh, that's oh, no. <laughs> we do that. On, that that's a big ending. Those are all big ending arms. <laughs> that's a <laughs> that's your choreography. Big, big, now, big ending arms. I think it's so interesting that you sang the song Cabaret, the Candor and Ebb tune from the musical Cabaret, long before Liza Minnelli did. Well, it's fun because you know, as you you know Liza so well, and I and I know her too, and and not not as well as you, but but uh, many times we've met and and had fun, you know. And uh, she always says, I know, I know, it's yours. It's your song. It's, your song. <laughs> it's yours, <laughs> you can have it. Well, we recorded it before the show even opened, before the Broadway show opened, you know, and long before the movie. And and uh, But the record companies would do that with you. They would give you, they would, I guess, pitch you these songs that were about to be uh, no, part of these big later. musicals. I found out later about that, Jim. I, I was told that, well, you were kind of the commitment singer. And I said, I don't know what that m means. And and they would say, well, Broadway shows before they open would, would figure out what they felt was the, the song, the best song in the show that would, that, you know, that would be the one that would catch on with the, and to me, whether it be a ballad or an up tune or whatever, or a novelty, you know, and, and, they would bring it to me before the show opened. I must say, William B. Williams was giving me so much airplay, and that was their their. I think that was a lot of airplay, and that would introduce the Broadway show via the song. Tommy Tune was uh, was in the cast, and and Tommy come see me. I love him, and he's so precious. And and he he said, Marilyn, we were so thrilled. I was in the cast. With, with a show called How Now Dow Jones. And you were singing Step to the Rear, which was from How Now Dow Jones. I said, we would be so thrilled when we hear it on the radio because we were in rehearsal for the show. And all of a sudden there was our show. I don't think the show did very well, but the song was very good to me, so. <laughs> I'll say, I mean, you recorded it and then that was also a big commercial for you, right? Lincoln Mercury came to me and said, we want to record it as a commercial. And that, that was my monetary hit <laughs> because that of the commercial. <laughs> so we thank you, Lincoln Mercury. Yes, um, I know, I, I mean, everybody I know is so obsessed with your performance style, your voice, um, There's your places, your shows are always jammed, but every table, it's like very sparkly. There's celebs everywhere. and. And I know that people like Ella Fitzgerald were just nuts for you. Well, I loved her. You know, she's she's my idol. I have a, a picture. Oh, I wish. Oh, oh, you do have a picture. Oh, I wish we had it. Oh, honey. <laughs> I wish you had the one of, of the two of us on either side of a mic. That was oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I'm glad you found that, honey. We, we were so very good cute. Friends. We were dressing room friends. We had all of our conversations in dressing rooms. <laughs> Crazy. After shows, after you'd go after back shows. to her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would um, go to her show, and, and we'd go. We'd stay in the dressing room for hours, or she'd come to my show, and we'd go to my dressing room and talk yeah. for hours. She was a precious, very shy. You know, brilliant, brilliant. She she didn't. She didn't even realize what she knew vocally and what she could do. She was so humble and so precious. I mean, I love knowing that. I just love knowing that. You at home, I mean, doesn't that, that's gonna change everything when you listen to her and you know that that was a sweet, loving woman. What a wonderful, 
legacy was. that is. That's pretty and great. And generous, you know, she always said great things about, she would, she called me, well, her favorite white singer, but, and, but it was not a racist term. She, they would ask her on, on national television shows, uh, I know of twice that she said it. She said, well, I love Sassy, I love Sarah Vaughan, and I love Carmen, Carmen McRae, and, uh, and Marilyn May, you know, as my favorite white singer. So, <laughs> yeah, I think you are my favorite white singer too. Um, you say that no, I hear you say that on this show all the time. To all I do. <laughs> You're my favorite white singer. I know. Some you people do. don't think that's normal. Um, okay, last question of the obvious questions that yeah, I have to ask you. You were on the Tonight Show 76 times with Johnny Carson. He right. adored you. Um, I adore him. How did he find you and what was the relationship like? Because I know he could be um, not real cozy on camera. Did you get to know him off camera? I, I, I knew him, not not really, uh, at the show. He would he would always make a, an effort to come and see me before the show started. And I know yeah. that was a little unusual. And I was honored about that because I was told that, that he didn't always do that. And uh, uh, he came to the dressing room, and he'd kind of pop into the dressing room, into the uh, makeup room, and uh, and and say, oh, "I'm so glad to have you back on the show." You know, he said things after performances that I would do that my mother would, <laughs> my mother wouldn't have would, wouldn't have honored me with those words as much really? as he. He was just uh, he was wonderful. Uh, of course, Doc Severinsen was fabulous. He was fun, and you know, Ed Ed McMahon brought me to the show. He saw me. Oh, is that how the, it happened? He saw me in the living room here in in New York, and um, he he after my show, he said, "I want to meet you." And he said, "He said, you know, you have to do the Tonight Show." And I said, "Yes, I do. <laughs> I definitely do." And in Skitch fact, Henderson, I do. Skitch Henderson was directing the show at that time. Oh my gosh. And that led to 76 there? performances. Wow. I mean, that is, that's a record. I think there were comedians that were on a lot, but for a singer, that was, ex that was an extraordinary record. Hello? Oh, I think we've either lost Marilyn or she's extremely, I there you are. I didn't hear a thing. No, I was just talking. I was saying terrible things about you. you. Um, <laughs> no, we just lost you for two seconds. <laughs> I don't doubt that. <laughs> okay, so uh, Billy uh, Billy Stritch uh, was the one that kind of suggested that you come back to New York. Is that right? It was. I don't want to say that if it's not right. Had, okay, oh, so absolutely. he brought he was, you back to the cabaret he, convention, right? He was, he, was, he was working with me around the country. You know, it wasn't yeah. that I had retired. And there was just no place for me to work here. And and yes, we did the the uh, uh, Mercer, um, you know, the cabaret conference. Mabel Mercer, Mabel yeah. Mabel Mercer, thank you. And um, and and but we've now done it every year for the last I think fifteen years now. And um, Billy, well, they were doing a, a, a Jerry Herman tribute. And um, and he knows that, that I've done Dolly and Mame a lot, and he said you have to you have to come and and uh, uh, the Broadway show is not on Broadway, but in various parts of the country. And um, he said uh, you have to come, and they want you to do some Jerry Herman songs on the cabaret conference. So we did that, and then and then as he was already he, he he would come from New York and work with me in other parts of the country and was working a lot with me in Kansas City because we usually do at least twice a year and many times three times a year and, and do a, a two week gig in Kansas City and uh, at a club. And he said, but now I've opened this wonderful room that I think would be great for us called the Metropolitan Room in Chelsea. And that's what brought me back. And the, the con first we did the conference and then we went to the, that wonderful room, which is now closed. Yes, <laughs> I'm sorry to say, but, I didn't but really. But you close. continued. I mean, you play every room in town. Essentially, you do Fifty Four Below. You do Birdland happily. You do uh, the Carlisle. You know, you you sing around. 
I do find science fiction for love. We do um, uh, Birdland. Well, you said Birdland, but the but now that they that wonderful room downstairs, the Birdland Theater, which I love, and and you love it upstairs. I love all of it. I love all of it. Uh, can we say anything about anything? Uh, the first engagement here in town um, that I pray have the opens will be Feinstein's 54 Below will be there in October for yes. uh, mm -hmm. seven days, the end of October. And then, then New Year's Eve, I'm praying that all of that happens will be New Year's Eve at Birdland. And uh, we, we had New Year's Eve last year at Birdland. Oh, no, not last year. No, the year before. That was canceled. Yeah. That was canceled. So Billy you and I. You guys, the yeah, second and I this goes home. on sale, we I just didn't. want everybody to know, the Are second they? it goes on sale, get your <laughs> tickets. Because New Year's Eve with Marilyn May is the best. Okay, you've been teaching nonstop. You, you do master classes. Right. Um, I want to talk about, I know what you love. And I know some of the things you teach. What are your pet peeves when you see an act? No, oh, that's not. I I hate to say that. <laughs> no, you don't have to say names. You don't. Well, unless well, you really want to. I, you know, I don't know if they're pet peeves. I think it's just just things that I that I think in performance is what I is what I like and what I enjoy. Let's say that. Not that they're wrong or luck, You know. Not that I'm wrong or right, but uh, you know I don't sit on on a bar stool. I might in a I might sit when I'm doing something cool. I'd like to order something cool. It's so warm here in town and the heat gets me down. Yes, I'd like something cool. I might do that on a bar stool, you know, because that is she is sitting at a bar, but not at any other time would I sit on a bar stool. That's one thing. You hate that. I know you don't <laughs> like it. Well, I just think all the energy in in the performer and the audience. Somebody I, I would say, why do you why do you think? Why should you sit on a bicycle? Well, everybody relaxes. They're already relaxed. <laughs> They've had a couple of drinks. They bought a ticket. They came to see you. They came to right. be entertained. Get up and work. <laughs> This is what I want. This is what I want. <laughs> I know you're bad. You're bad. Get the hell up, for God's sake. Get up and work. You don't like hats either, do you? And sing the song. <laughs> you hats? You don't. Yeah, hats. Uh, in what? In in in. in <laughs> On a head. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't. I I like hats. Yeah. I love oh, hats. okay. I'd I like heard you did not like great. hats. No, I okay. like big, big hats. Great big okay. Hats. Dolly wears wow. a lot of great big hats. I always loved Dolly because I was you know, oh. hats and, and long gowns and, and great stuff. That was fun. <laughs> well, but that's Hello, Dolly. I'm talking about on the stage at Birdland. <laughs> well, I okay. mean, I don't see why. Are we, are we on the street or, or, right. or are we in the club? You know, so, so hats okay. on. Okay, so upper. Billy just suggested something that I should bring up. What about if <laughs> I'm on stage and I'm talking and I'm singing and I'm talking and I take a bottle of water and oh. just slug. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh my God. No, yeah, I mean, you know, you're doing a performance, honey. And I mean, I, I think a, a goblet, a nice goblet of, of water is, aren't these silly little things? But I think mm -hmm. that everybody comes to see glamor and and they want to be entertained and for you to be so relaxed that you pick up a bottle of water how pretty <laughs> is that no you do, and you don't do that anyway you go to the bar <laughs> that makes me so happy but it's true uh but you have a very uh glamorous vision of what this all should be obviously not everybody is that not everybody gets dressed up not everybody mm -hmm. But you do. And that's all and right. Whatever their beliefs are. No, right. of course it is. Of course it is. Nobody's wrong. Nobody's right. But I love that. Um, I love that you have a vision uh, from when it was really such well, a special thing to go to these clubs. And, and I mean, it's, it's still, still a special thing. thing. Yes, thank you. It still is, and it's so expensive now. It better be special. 
Yes, I think so too. I think if you know you need to dress, you know, beautifully and 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 know your act and 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 plan it so that it's just the best thing they've they've seen. They they spend a lot of money now to come to come and see you and and uh, and I'm always thrilled when people say, you know, I almost didn't come tonight. Uh, I've had a terrible week. Um, everything this week has gone wrong. And I thought, oh, I think I'll just go to bed. And then I thought, no, I've got this ticket. I'm, I'm going to come and see you. And I'm so glad I came. I feel so much better. And I said, thank you. That's my job. That was and, my job. To and make that's what better. you, you connect with every single person in the audience. You literally touch people as you're walking in. If you come in through the back of the room, you're touching people on their shoulders and not inappropriately. Usually, uh, just a little, <laughs> just a little tap on the, you know, hello. Well, I, just let them let them know that I know they're there. <laughs> right. Well, but I think that's something that nobody thinks about. You and I have talked about this. The eye connection that you have is so extraordinary, and we have both seen acts that sing in a small room the size of my living room to. Oh an unseen balcony to the fourth <laughs> wall. It's, the fourth yeah. wall. it's yeah. like, what's up there? I know that. I know, I know, you know, uh, sometimes people will say, well, but, but you're in this great big theater. And, and, and I, I felt like you were singing directly to me. And so consequently somebody would say, but well, you know, how, how do you do that? It's all dark out there. You can't even see anybody. And I said, it's called pretend. It's called play, play light. <laughs> play light. But that's who was out there. But haven't you learned? I know you weren't so wild about this virtual thing. No. And performing like this. However, I'm I'll grateful. say the same I'm thing. I'm so grateful you kept, oh. kept this alive, honey. I'm well, so me too. Yeah. I'm grateful yeah. that it's there. But to but me, it's all the these same thing. People that, that come and and from all walks of entertainment. And you bring them on, and they're precious. They all have a wonderful message, and it's a lovely thing that you have, have created this kind of thing. That and 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 the, the whole computer idea is great. I just I just love the personal aspect of it. We just recently did a virtual that was an hour and a half, and I was I was amazed and thrilled of the, about, with the people that that came and said they really enjoyed it. Um, and I and I do see the value of it in these times. I just sure. was glad when when the clubs get open and oh, and me we too. Have, we have that personal contact. Of course, we all do. But to know that on the other side of that little hole are that's your audience. We're pretending. We're yes, talking right to them, oh, just like so. It's yeah. kind of the same thing. I had them. I had about, them say words. You know, I said you're you're saying that. You know, there's one thing that I always say: repeat my name and. And I said, I know you did it. I can almost hear it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I almost hear applause. You, can almost um, hear it. you work with a lot of students who want to do this, who do do this, who yearn to do this. Um, when you were starting, and even when I was starting, we would do five nights a week in right. a club for two weeks or whatever, really two, paying two shows a dues. Night. Yeah, two, two shows a paying. Night. Dues. You sang in contests, moose clubs on the radio. How do people get good at this now? Because there isn't that kind of a, it's I not know. that kind of a world anymore. I know, I know. I, and I don't know other than just every chance you get on cast party is a great, great, a great thing that you offer that, that uh, there are other people that do that kind of thing and just every opportunity that you get to get up and sing and and communicate with people don't miss that chance oh but i don't know i'm i'm scared oh i'm i'm afraid or I'm, i don't i don't know i don't think i'm good enough yet oh yes you are yes you are you know just do it <laughs> yeah and just do it time. say yes and isn't it nice that and probably tell me why you created cast party you mean live cast party? Yes. Why did you? Yes. Why did I? I? I think I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't know it was something anybody needed or cared about. Uh, but the second 
that I saw, you know, Marilyn, I tried to be a singer and, you know, Donny Osmond, or, but you know what I mean? A successful singer <laughs> there for decades. And people were polite and clapped and I had a certain <laughs> bit of a career, but nobody was as interested in me as they were when I shifted that spotlight a little bit and helped shine it on other people. Yes, that, all of a sudden people found me more interesting and I was like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Why didn't somebody tell me that decade ago? Right. And, and, and isn't it, you, you have the young, young people and, and, uh, and certainly I can say this, the older people uh, including me that love to get up and sing. Uh, you have Broadway show stars that just drop in. And isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? For, for the it's audience? my every dream. It's everything I wanted growing up. I wanted to hang out with talented people, the smartest, the funniest, the prettiest, whatever. I wanted to be around people that were the best at what they did. And that, you know, that happened, not on purpose, but it's, it's happened. And with so many thanks to you uh, for being so supportive all these decades, for real. It's always been fun for me. And, and, and you know, I have people coming from out of town and, and I'll be working in a club and, and we'll then maybe I only have one show to do. We just did Dizzy's last year. We do Dizzy's every year at, at Jazz at Lincoln Center. And, and, the, um, uh, and we do two shows a night it's still there, you know. But uh, but where we just do one show, we'll dash over because you can still get there by ten o'clock, and, right. and that's when you start. So yes. so that's great fun. That's that's great fun, and and uh, and you hear of everybody from all ages, all all kinds of talent. I I love that part. When I when I teach master classes, I'm always thrilled that just people. I always say people. Some people uh, uh, want to play golf. Some people play bridge. Some people want to sing. So you know, it, it can be their hobby too. It doesn't have to be great. Absolutely. But it, but it's absolutely fun to have, have, have music as their hobby. And isn't it fun to be part of somebody's moment? You know, we kind of we do it all the time, and we celebrate people all the time. So we forget how much it means, really, sometimes this is their big moment sometimes on our stage in our little open mic night. It's, it's a, an honor to be part of that. I know that sounds, I don't know, you a know, little over the top, but there, I do feel it's an honor. There is a, you know, of course there's don't tell mama, you know, that, that our precious Sydney Meyer manages and, and we have that small room, you know, over there. Yeah. And, and, People, people can be comfortable, you know, the new newcomers. I have a lot of students that Marcy Kraft is, is one student that's been with me for years and she loves doing it. She doesn't want to do it all year long. She makes a very good living doing something else. And uh, she she um, uh, started doing shows there and, and crowds came and it was wonderful. They have this little tiny room that seats 60 people. And it's a wonderful thing. Um, John Phillip is a student of mine. And I'll be doing Hudson, um, New York, at the Opera House in July. July. Uh, can I plug that? I'm going to plug that. July 1. Plug two. it all. <laughs> July plug 1. it all. And, uh, and John is going to do a specialty number there that I've designed for him. And we've worked... You know, we were, he works like crazy and, and it's maybe for only one night or maybe it's the beginning of us putting an act together and he'll, he'll do it somewhere in town and, uh, and people will come. They have friends that, that support people that, that maybe have other wonderful jobs, but they right. love doing this. You know, Arturo, you know, Arturo is so precious. He, he sings so great and chooses wordy, wordy broadway songs that are difficult and yeah. and when he gets up he's gorgeous and charming and he's he's an architect you know as a living but he doesn't act every year you know isn't that isn't that great because that is, i must say we're in we're in a business that lets us bring love lots of love it's so true uh you guys at home give marilyn some love 
Find her records on Spotify, iTunes. She's on Instagram. She's on Facebook. Marilyn May is out there. She's working constantly. She's traveling. She's schlepping. She's doing. She's teaching. <laughs> she's, she's having a blast. She's drinking <laughs> apple martinis after the show with her, shoe, with her shoes off. We went to see Billy last night at yeah. the West End Cafe. And he was, was he good? He was sensational. He was West Bank. Crazy. West Bank Cafe. Oh, West Bank. What did I say? Uh -huh. I don't know. Doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> West Bank Cafe. Cafe. And um, how wonderful that they're now they're bringing entertainment, you know, and and uh, and it's getting it's getting more alive. And I, I think you'll probably continue with this because people do love sitting at home, having a drink and watching all these darling people that you bring on. I mean, we get people from all over the planet, Marilyn. It's so much fun. Um, you have a bunch of songs that to me are uh, incredibly life affirming. It's all about the lyric for you. And so when you sit in a Marilyn show, you walk away with all of these, with all of this great poetry in your head. Positive, um, positive, all positive, positive. Yeah. Most is there positive. a song? Is there a song that um, just sums up how you feel about life in general, well, your life? My my mantra is it's today, you know, and and we have to value each and every day, and uh, you know, and it my always think, although like every day isn't, but I like to think every day is a party. And uh, the the wonderful Jerry Herman uh, that he wrote for MAME is, you know, light the candles, get the ice out. <laughs> do it, do, do, do this much of it. Light the candles, get the ice out, roll the rug up, it's today. Though it may not be anyone's birthday, and though it's far from them, um, <laughs> that's hard to do without accompaniment. <laughs> far from the first of the year, I know that this this very minute has history in it. We're here, we're here. So enjoy it. It's valuable that we're here. Thank God, and it, it's more meaningful now than it ever was. Isn't it the truth? Yes. You're meaningful. You're more meaningful now than than ever before. Thank you. Marilyn, you have given so much to so many people. I love you. I love Thank you, you too. Thank you for joining us. And uh, I love Morocco too. <laughs> Not where, as much where did as that you. come from? I no, I, I just do love Morocco. <laughs> I love Harry Connick. I love Rob Lowe. I don't know where. <laughs> <laughs> but I really love Mo. He, he came to see, he came to, to film me in, in uh, Florida just a, a few months ago. Billy and I were working the Wick Theater there and Mo came. And so we're looking forward to CBS Sunday morning. I don't know when, but but keep your eyes out for that. That'll be fun. Well, he already did you once on I TV. Knew it. Well, yeah. I beg your pardon. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> I just fell off my stool. Are we on, are we on the air? Are is this, are we is on this the thing air? on? <laughs> testing, testing. <laughs> anyway, no yeah, and, and he's wonderful, I have to say. <laughs> well, we'll so, send this to him. Yeah. Well, you know, Do you want to say anything to anybody? Do you like anybody else? You know, I worked a driveway this, this past year, honey. You I did what? Here. A driveway in Kansas City. <laughs> I performed on a driveway. <laughs> the musicians called me. My darling, great musicians in Kansas City called. And uh, Rod Fleeman, my, my guitarist, and Gerald Bates. And they called and said, you know, we're working. We're working in a, <laughs> in a driveway. <laughs> and people bring their lawn chairs. And they sit. And, and uh uh, and we wish you, and I said, well, I want to come and hear you, you know, and I will. And so, of course, when I got there, why people were coming up to the car saying, before we <laughs> ever got out of the car, are you going to sing? And I said, yes, I would love to. Yeah, of course I am, which I hadn't planned to at all. But, but uh, <laughs> that was one of my, that's one of my real important engagements in 2020. <laughs> A driveway, you know, Karen Mason is playing Frank E. Campbell 
funeral home. Oh, bless her heart. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're doing gigs. I her, I'm, well, that's great. How, how, how are they setting that up? I guess they have a lot of chairs. <laughs> Do they have more than one room? I don't know. We'll have to, we need Let's to go. ask her about this. We need to go. What is to, that? I don't, <laughs> I don't know, but I'll find out. You guys at home, look up Frank Campbell Funeral Home, Karen Mason. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. <laughs> She's killing him. <laughs> what? <laughs> Oh, gosh, you couldn't avoid it, could you? You just couldn't I, avoid it. <laughs> it's the Shecky in me. <laughs> oh, dear. I'm going to leave you now. I love you. <laughs> you will never leave me. I love you me. more. I know you'll never leave me. <laughs> I will never leave you. Thank <laughs> Helen for holding the light. I will. I will. Um, look, your lighting was perfect. You were worried. Oh, I know it. You'd be amazed this funny little thing that I have that I bought. What do you have? I bought, I bought this in the festival in Pompano, in Pompano, in Florida. There. The Pompano the Festival. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, see? Perfect. Isn't that and good? I didn't buy it for this, but, but you know. But you, you do make, now. You make do. You know, you just make do with whatever. Listen, <laughs> it's show business. We know how to do this. Good old, oh, what's that old song? It's show biz. Good old screw everyone you know biz. And all the <laughs> people that you know biz. That's really show biz. Do you know that song? No, but I love it. I did that a whole time it. years ago. I got I to gotta find it again. We got to find it. It'll be. Let's pull that out. There's our duet. <laughs> Good. Oh. oh, it is. You're right. Okay. Done. Okay. All right. <laughs> I know you've been dying to sing with me. Okay, I'll do it. I do sing with you. Have we ever sung together? No, I work alone. No. Uh, Marilyn, thank you so much. <laughs> You're just the best. You're just the best, Jim. You are. You I are. Love this you. was so fun. I love you. Everybody Jim. on this show is loving you. They're writing in great things. Jane Monheit's writing in great oh. things. Uh, her, Libby, uh, Mark, uh, Eileen Graff, Julie Garnier, Jackie, Jackie Joseph. Oh. They all love you. I love them too. You know, we'll we... see you soon. You look, you can turn out your little light now. You're done. Okay. And, and good night. Well, nothing <laughs> changed. Did it? <laughs> <laughs> And nothing changed. That's Marilyn May, you guys. Um, very, very special conversation we got to have with Marilyn. How much fun. See her at Birdland, New Year's Eve, and the week after with Billy Stritch at the piano. I don't know who else, a band, uh, I, I don't know. I, I leave that to her, but it'll be great music and a uh, New Year's Eve that we all need to have, that's for sure. Uh, oh, Ruby. Oh, Jim. The best, right? You know, no, and also I think we now need to make a segment where we just say who we're, who we're loving that, that particular day. They don't have to be on pajama cast party. You know, <laughs> I just love Mo Rocca. I, 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 whatever, <laughs> I love Mo Rocca too. He's been on this very show. Y yes, he has. So who would you, if you could book anybody on this show, like literally anybody, who would it be? Well, who would, I, be, who I, would make you so excited? I said this in my Broadway World interview, and I was serious because I don't, I don't know if you remember. It takes a lot for me to get tongue tied in front of a celebrity because growing yeah, up, well, and especially growing up with my mom, we were just around people. It was normal. So it takes a lot for me to get to the point where I can't remember anything. But I think. I mean, we, we've had a lot of like guests on this show who have made me like so excited that I, you know, reel it in. But I think if we could have anybody on to just talk to, because I just, I want to listen to everything and just like soak it up like a sponge. I would love to have Joe Mantello on the show. Oh. And that would be my okay. 
dream. I th- that would Why be. Why do my I dream. feel like we could maybe make that happen? Hmm. Okay. Good Suddenly, to know. I can't feel my legs anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, but that I, could be your back issues. I, could, I don't you know, know who mine said. would be. I mean, I would say, of course, I would say Cher or Kelly. Right. Okay. Burnett. But I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking within this realm. Like, I'm right. Thinking- I would say, I would say, we need to get Donny Osmond on the show. Oh well, yeah, for sure. I mean, and he's somebody I actually know, so yeah. that could that could happen. We I need mean, to get him. I, I, you know, I have, I have like a, like a wish list of those who, who yeah. sing. But as far as chatting, you know, like what we, what we just had a great conversation. I, I want right. to learn everything about him. I mean, I know, okay. I know so much about him. Let but me I look. Let me know. look into it. Um, you know who we should talk to right now, or at least see the, the results of his genius is Justin Squiggs Robertson. I'm going to put on my glasses to see the finished product of what he has done for us tonight. Okay, ready? Yeah, I'm so ready. Here we go. Boom! Oh my, oh my God. That, okay, that's so good. So spot on. Squid. First of all, look at Birdland, the pictures on the wall. So I cute. Know. Look at Marilyn, spot on. Joan, spot on, all of them. JG, Tehran, you, me, Justin Squiggs Robertson, you're a genius. Go to his website, check him out. He is fantastic. Squiggsonline.com. We love him. I Um, I love, in the spirit of saying who we love, I love Justin Squiggs Robertson. I do too, I do too. (laughs) Um, Can we talk about next week? If you want. It's your it's show. Be, we can talk about whatever we want. Really, really good. Uh, look at these people. First of all, could this be a better looking cast? <laughs> Singer, arranger, Chester Martin. Tap dancer, extraordinary, extraordinaire, <laughs> Lamont, Lamont Brown. Soul singer, Lauren Smith. And from Celtic women or Celtic women, Alex Sharp. Coming to us all the way from, I believe, Scotland. I'm very so excited. She's, she's going to have to stay up really late. Well, I'm very excited. When I was younger, I used to watch the Celtic Women like concert DVD all the time. So I'm very excited. <laughs> sail away, sail away, sail away. Sail away, sail away, sail away. That's my impression. Uh, you guys, this has been a blast. <laughs> Ruby, I think this was a smash. Uh, let's do it again next Monday. Sure. Thank you, all of you who've been watching. I just love seeing your names floating by in the comments, and um, I appreciate it so much. Thank you for watching. Thank you for donating to Pajama Cast Party and to AIDS Walk New York via Venmo and PayPal. Thank you so much, and we'll see you Monday. Good night. Thanks for watching Pajama Cast Party. To follow us on YouTube, just hit subscribe. Click on that little bell, and we'll keep you updated on future shows. You can also follow us on Instagram at Jim Caruso's Cast Party. The end.